What the hell is Brother Devon doing here? Oh, testify. Brother Devon has just come out and absolutely thrown down. What's going on, God Zero Nation? This is our God Zero. We are back with more WWE SmackDown. Shut your mouth! Thank you for joining me, as always. June second week, SmackDown. That's where it's at. Picking up the action where we left off in the last episode. Things are starting to heat up. Things are getting real. We managed to keep our title. We move on to another week. We're taking on The Rock in the main event. Hardcore Fatal 4-Way, Taz, Big Valboski, Lance Storm, and Chuck. Chris Benoit versus Edge in the mid-card, and then us versus The Rock in the main event. Benoit and Edge would have been a brilliant matchup. Say what you want about Benoit, he will always be one of my favorite superstars of all time, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing will change that fact. I missed that SmackDown setup as well. But I hope you guys have been enjoying this series, ladies and gentlemen. I definitely have been. And I'm looking forward to getting involved in plenty more old-school WWE games moving forward. I'm going with Chuck. Oh, there we go. Chuck coming through in the hardcore match. I'm going to go with Benoit. Yep. Let's make it three from three. And you know how that goes down. We've just got to win. That's what it's about. It has been such a trip down memory lane being able to sit down and play this game. I remember I used to play this when I was younger. Sit around the PS2. Myself, my dad, my uncle. We would take it in turns. We'd select our superstar. As soon as we lost one match, we would have to hand the controller over and somebody else would start their own My Career up. And I remember, even though superstars like Triple H and Chris Benoit and everything we're great to play as. I always used to play as stupid wrestlers just for a bit of a laugh. So the Hurricane was one I always used to get involved with. And you can uh, guarantee every time it came to my matches, I was always losing the first match and sitting back and waiting 15, 20 matches for me to get my turn again. But that's the beauty about being able to play when you're older, ladies and gentlemen, because there's no one you have to share with. And I know what I'm doing this time around. But I think what we're going to do, as opposed to what we're doing with Retro Rewind in the aspect of being able to vote for the next game, I think we'll do that with what we're doing with the Warriors. The game that replaces the Warriors will be a vote for this one, because it's a wrestling title. Once we finish this career mode, we will move on, choose a brand new wrestling title, and kick up a brand new career or season mode with that particular game. So that way, we've always got an old school wrestling game in the mix as well as another old school game rotating as well. I think it keeps things fresh. Being a passionate wrestling fan like I am, I really want to get stuck into uploading wrestling content. And not just WWE stuff. I've got plans to uh, bring something different hopefully within the next week or so to the channel. And I'm hoping it goes over well because I've been sitting down doing a bit of research and I think we can have a lot of fun with what I've got planned moving forward with this particular game. The Rock, the people's champ, the most electrifying entertainer in sports entertainment, is about to get his ass beat. The King of the Ring is the upcoming pay-per-view. We've already pretty much established in the last episode that it's going to be Booker T that will be the number one contender. It gave us four choices, and we basically had to call somebody out saying, we think they're not going to win. The King of the Ring, and how it turns out is that person actually does go on to ring the King of the Ring and become number one contender and challenge us for our undisputed championship. Our choices were Rhino, Farouk, Hardcore Holly, or Booker T. And out of those four, 
It makes sense that Booker T and Triple H would throw down again. They had a heated rivalry back in the day, and I thought we'd try to kick that rivalry back up again. But The Rock at the moment, a lot of momentum swinging his way. Even has the time to throw in a taunt. Come on, Triple H. Okay. We're obviously at a point now where the difficulty is starting to ramp up, which if you're new to the series and you haven't been watching, this isn't a game where you could choose a set difficulty from the beginning. Back in the day, it had an automated difficulty setting where the season mode would start off reasonably easy, let you sink into it, and then the further you got, the more difficult the AI became. And as you can see here, the rock, uh, He's been a bit of a handful compared to the last few times we've come up against him. Which is a good thing, because I want to have a bit of a challenge. I did say a couple of episodes ago that I can guarantee you there will be some matches that we come close to losing, or we will lose. I don't want to go through an entire career mode with not having lost one match. I don't want it to be that easy. Which, in a certain retrospect, I think that's one thing that the current... WWE games are getting wrong they set you the task of having to win by pinfall or submission and if you lose that match you have to click replay and do it all over again I really feel you should have the option to be able to take that loss it helps build character ladies and gentlemen you can't win every match Unless your name's Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar and Vince McMahon wants to get you over but apart from that ladies and gentlemen you can't win them all But we've got this match back on our terms now. And as I say that, The Rock comes back with a snap DDT. He flips back up. He's dropping the people's stomp. And now he's going to wrench my arm. Great. Can you take your bitch slaps elsewhere, please, Dwayne? I don't have time for it. Samoan drop. Come on, Triple H, get up. Uh-oh. He's uh, dangerously close to having a smackdown up his sleeve, ladies and gentlemen. He's put us in the sharpshooter. That could be enough to get him there. Oh. We're in big trouble. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. Oh no. Um. This is not what we want. Uh oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we, I think, are about to cop our first loss for the career mode. No, 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 no. We aren't coming back from that. We're knocked out. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I turned around and told you we weren't going to win every match. But as you can see, if you watched last episode and compare it to this start, the AI has improved drastically just from one week to the next this is where it's at this is what we want a little bit more competitiveness the rock finally gets a w against triple h because we've actually had his number for the first few episodes so it's good to see him bring one down for the feud the rock victorious in smackdown's main event we got two from three right that's not the start we want, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to redeem ourselves. It should be on Raw this week. No, it's SmackDown again. I don't know why we aren't jumping between, because the Undisputed Champion was supposed to jump between SmackDown and Raw. I know for a fact you could do that. King of the Ring quarterfinal, Rikishi versus Billy. And then we've got Spike Dudley versus Lance Storm. And then we're in a tag match. We've got Triple H... And Chris Jericho teaming up for the first time. Love Chris Jericho. I'm a huge Chris Jericho fan. 
Oh, the big Valboski. Okay, what does he want then? This King of the Ring doesn't make any sense to me. The Ace card is superior to the King. This year's winner is going to be destroyed by the Ace. There's only one Ace in this company and that's me. What I'm saying is that I'm going to kick the winner's ass instead of you, champ. I'm here, Val. You want to say that again to my face? Triple H, who was just being torn to just showed up with a serious expression on his face. I'll take you on right here, right now. And Ace, I think you're more like the Joker card. Oh, hell yeah. We'll throw that shade. Because that's the type of thing Triple H would do. He didn't always throw down, but he always was very clever with what he said on the mic. And we're now taking on the big Valboski in a singles match. But speaking of Chris Jericho, ladies and gentlemen, had the honor of meeting him last year on the Chris Jericho cruise. I have mentioned that a few times on the channel already. But seriously, as a child growing up, Billy's going to win this one. To be able to watch him go about his stuff each and every week. I'm going with Spike Dudley. It was absolutely incredible to meet him face to face and have the chance to have a chat with him very momentous uh, event in my life that I'm very grateful I was able to undertake. Great guy too. We've got to get it done. We've got to talk. Oh, there we go. Chris Jericho right on cue. He doesn't throw the term greatest of all time around for no reason, ladies and gentlemen. Without a doubt, Chris Jericho, when it comes to wrestling, is one of the greatest to ever step into that ring. He is also one of the greatest to ever pick up a microphone because when it comes to promos Chris Jericho knows how to throw down Big Felboski a bit out of, out of his depth though I mean wanting to challenge the champion come on Big Felboski you were never in a position within the WWE to ever challenge for a main title let alone challenge the undisputed champion. Don't get me wrong. Back in the Attitude Era, Val Venus did have his his time in the in the sun, especially when it comes to some of the promos he did, given the gimmick he had. But the big Valboski, I think that's pushing it just a little bit too far. You've already tried to take me on once before, Val. We know how that turned out. But then again, we just saw The Rock hand me my ass on a silver platter. So, uh, hopefully we don't experience that twice in a row. At least we get to bounce back against Val Venus. That's a, that's a bonus, right? Right? And he starts with a smackdown. Get stuffed. I really do think that's because we went the option of, um using the promo instead of challenging him to a match, I feel if we challenged him, we would have had the SmackDown. Because a similar instance happened with the triple threat match at the last pay-per-view. We turned around and said to Jerry the King Lawler backstage that I was going to take both of them on and still walk out as champion, and we started that match with the SmackDown icon. So... That would be good to see moving forward in current generation wrestling games. Having promo opportunities backstage that would have a bearing on your ability in ring. Whether it gave you a potential boost in ability or you started with a finisher or whatever the case may be. But Val Venus, she's just playing corner to corner here. I don't understand. Val, if this is all you can do, my friend, no wonder you never held a serious championship in your life. Over here. Oh, here we go. We're playing corners again. All right, time to play the game. Let's go, Val. I've had enough of your shit.
Let's get a point of discussion going in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. We always like to uh, get the comment section flowing with some creative juices. I'm curious to know if there's any wrestling fans that are watching this episode. What is your current favorite promotion to watch? WWE, AEW, New Japan, Ring of Honor, anything else? Let me know. What are you currently into the most? I have to say, um, I've been all in with all Elite Wrestling since they first announced the initial people that were coming on board, especially when Jericho announced he was going to get on board, because I'm pretty much a believer of wherever Jericho goes, I go. That's that's how I've rocked wrestling for a very long time. That's how big of a Chris Jericho fan I truly am, but they did some good things at their first pay-per-view, and then Fighter Fest wasn't too bad either. Currently awaiting their uh, charity event that they're doing next, but I'm still a huge WWE fan. There's no doubt about it. Lately, I've been getting stuck into Ring of Honor. I got stuck into that a lot more so last year than ever before. And now most of those guys that I really got stuck into, like SCU, they've all moved over to All Elite. So it's like the best of both worlds. They're bringing in all the favorite people I like watching wrestling together in one place. But let me know. What do you currently love watching the most? I know why Val keeps throwing us in the corner because I'm pretty sure his finisher is an elbow drop or something along those lines and he needs to go to the top rope. The only problem is he's trying to frog splash us and he's not able to frog splash us. Come here. It's game over for you, Val. Good night. Just for you. We'll hit the Matrix as well. Thank you for coming. Counter Earl. One, two, three. Thank you very much. And that, Val, is why you aren't the number one contender. Because you can't roll with the champion. Speaking of Earl Hebner, it is so nostalgic to see him in the ring for All Elite as a referee. Throwing back to some of the greatest matches I've ever seen with Earl at the helm as the referee. What the hell is Brother Devon doing here? Oh, testify! Brother Devon has just come out and absolutely thrown down. What in the hell? Okay, guys, SmackDown, week four. Not only the final week of this episode, but the last week leading up to the King of the Ring pay-per-view. We're taking on Devon and Bradshaw in a tornado tag with Jericho as our partner. Rikishi, Maven, Storm, and Chuck opening up SmackDown in a fatal four-way. Some of these matches are absolutely insane. I don't understand why the opening card manages to get all of these great stipulations. The most exciting match we've had in a very long time is a triple threat and a tornado tag match. People be having Hell in a Cell matches in the mid card and cage matches to open up the show. Anyone backstage? We've got Taz backstage. Let's go talk to Taz. We haven't spoken to anybody backstage in a little while, especially not in this episode. What do you got for me, Taz? ECW original. EC dub. EC dub. Not saying a word. Do you want me to kick your ass? If you don't, get the hell out of my way now. Well. What if I wanted you to kick my ass? What would have happened then, Taz? Alright, there's no one else back here. Let's head to the arena. Gotta go with Chuck here for the cage fatal four-way. Boom, there it is. Ah, uh, Billy. Billy versus Booker T. And Booker T will win, as we know. But Billy is so OP in this game. I don't know what it is about Billy and Chuck, but the pair of them are so OP in this game. Don't get me wrong, back in the Attitude Era, I was a Billy Gunn fan, but 
I wouldn't say the gimmick of uh, Billy and Chuck had him at his at his peak, at his greatest. He was definitely at his best when he was rolling around with the New Age Outlaws. But ladies and gentlemen, here comes your undisputed champion. The game, the cerebral assassin, the king of kings, the COO. My plan is to take this title all the way to the end of the career mode. I think we can do it, ladies and gentlemen. I have faith. You just have to bow leave. And we're tagging with Chris Jericho, who actually probably came second in the superstars I wanted to play as for this current playthrough. So don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, there will be, at one point or another, a Chris Jericho season mode when it comes to one of the future wrestling games we play. I wouldn't be doing the GOAT due diligence if I didn't do a GOAT career mode. There he is. Man, I love Jericho. Oh, oh testify! Why do I say Brother Devon? It's Reverend Devon. But ladies and gentlemen, I don't need to have to remind you, if we didn't have Reverend Devon, we might not have ever gotten Batista because uh, Deacon Batista, you know, the money gatherer that he used to walk around and gather all the donations, he, uh, that's how he started in WWE, so might not have ever been. All right, Jericho, you take Bradshaw. Devon wants to come out and throw down with me. I'm going to throw down with him. Looks like I'm going to have to do double the work, huh? Snap DDT. Jericho's now getting some momentum going. That's great. I love the arrogant pin from Jericho. Flexing the muscles. Just putting the one leg up. Jericho, what are you doing? And I love his kick to the gut animation. It's okay, Bradshaw. You get yours. Oh shit, sorry Jericho! Consider that payback for the suplex. I don't think so, Devon. Get off him, Reverend. I have today's word. Praise be to Triple H! Devon's knocked out. Damn it. Come here. Alright Jericho, you've got one job. Take care of Bradshaw. Jericho, I need you to take down Bradshaw, please. Can I get a cheeky pin on while he's got the submission on? Count it, ref. 
God damn it! Jericho, I need you to lift your game, son. Reverend Devon, trying to work on the knee. Come on, Jericho, he's going to cop a big boot here. There we go! That's what I'm talking about, Chris! Unity! That's what it's about! Glad that we managed to finish the episode with a win, considering, uh... We started with copping that L from Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Oh, here we go. I want to face you at the pay-per-view. I know you won't run away from me because you're a true champion, right? This will be a dangerous title shot for you because the match will be a cage match. Triple H versus Reverend Devon in a cage. Oh, testify. But ladies and gentlemen, that brings this episode of SmackDown Shut Your Mouth to a close. Thank you for joining me as always. If you have been enjoying this on the channel, continue to hit that like button. It goes a long way to supporting myself and I cannot thank you guys enough for all that support. If you're new to the channel, plenty of other content to check out. I urge you to do so. If you enjoy what I'm throwing down, hit that subscribe button. Get on board the God Zero Nation. We are on track to a thousand subscribers. So if you want to spread the word of our God Zero to your friends, please do so. Social media is in the description down below. Notification bell, make sure you hit it. But that's it from me. I'm out of here. And as always, I will catch you guys next time.